Jesus, I will never go back again. Never, never go back again. I have seen you, O oh Lord Jesus. Never, never go back again. That's what it means. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glorify his name. Worship his majesty. Thank him for his faithfulness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, oh Jesus. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy. Father, we give you glory because you are faithful. Ancient of this, we worship you for you are kind. For you are the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, and forever. You are the ancient of days, everlasting Father. You are the bigger than the biggest, the greater than the greatest, the oldest than the older. Father, we thank you, Jesus of Nazareth. Ancient of this, we worship you, Lord. King of glory, we adore you, Lord. Prince of peace, we honor you, Lord. The one that builds that nobody can pull down. 
the one that pulls down that nobody can erect. Ancient of this everlasting father, the one that speaks that nobody condemns, the one that decree that nobody Go, go, go against. Hallelujah to your name, Father. Amen. We worship your holy name. Amen. For you love us and die for us. And Lord Jesus, we thank you for all the things you have done, Lord. Glory be to your name in the highest. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. Thank you for your kindness, Lord. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Hallelujah to your name. Father, we ask that you take absolute control in the name of Jesus. Speak to us and through us today in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Yes. Father, as I open my mouth, Lord, give us utterance of your word, Father. Yes. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Yes. We do not want to hear the word from the source of man, but from you, O oh Lord. A message is what we want to hear today, not a sermon, Father. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Yes. Speak, O oh Lord, and let us hear you, Father, that your name will be glorified forevermore. Hallelujah to your name, Lord. Amen. Every soul that will listen to this message, every soul that is under this message, I pray that your heart, your mind receive the touch of God. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Amen. that you might be able to listen and you follow it to the end and your life will never remain the same again. In the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth. Father, we pray that your word will not stand against us in judgment. We will be the hearers and the doers of the word and not the hearers of the speaker us alone and let your name be glorified lord in jesus name we come against every spirit of distraction every spirit of commotion every spirit of misinterpretation of your word we command them in the name of jesus to go into hiding right now by the power in the blood of jesus of nazareth send your angels lord to pull them together and break them into pieces in the name of jesus of nazareth thank you because you are the lord we worship your holy name in jesus mighty name amen, amen. hallelujah glory be to god in the highest hallelujah. amen let us give the lord jesus a clap offering hallelujah amen, amen. This is the message that is tied to through the help of the Holy Spirit. Living in Christ. Living in what? Living in Christ. Living in Christ. Living in Christ. So we are going to see how to live in Christ. The word is so common. Everybody is saying, I'm living in Christ. I'm in Christ Jesus. I'm living in Christ. I'm a child of God. So we're going to see today whether you live in Christ. If you are not, how can you? And what does it mean, living in Christ? Living in Christ. It is not a physical house that you can see and go carry your bed and live there. Christ is not like physical house. You carry your bed and say, I'm going. Even if you go to stay in the building that we call church, you are not living in Christ by going to sleep in the church. But you are living in Christ by what we are going to hear today. And our Bible reading is, is taken from the book of John, chapter 15, verses 1 to 8. John 15, 1 to 8. I am the true vine. I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. Mm -hmm. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, mm -hmm. he takes away. Mm -hmm. And every branch that bears fruit, he, pr he prunes, mm -hmm. that, it may be, that it may bear more fruit. Mm -hmm. You are already clean. Because of the word which I have spoken to you, abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you, cannot, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. In, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Amen. Amen. Living in Christ. You see, first of all, before we continue, I want to let you know there's a lot of privilege, opportunity, advantages in living in Christ. A lot of opportunity and advantages in living in Christ. Because when you live, I will just give you an example of when you live 
when you leave in the school. Now, the time you get to the school is faster than somebody that lives outside of school. And the opportunity and the privileges that you get from living in the school is different from people that are living outside of a school. If you are a university student, you're living on the school campus. That's what I'm, I'm talking about. Now, people live outside, but you live inside. Whenever you want to go to library, you just it's around the corner. Whenever you want to go to anywhere, it's around the corner. You can go there any time of the day that you want. But when you live off campus, you have to take public transportation to go there each time you want to do anything, even when you want to go to your classes. But when you live in Christ, it's of greater benefit and importance. If you see that passage we just read, towards the end from verse 7, it said, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done to you done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. You will be my disciple. In other words, if you live in Christ, you will pray and every of your prayers shall be answered. And also, you will be called a child of God. And also, you will, your life will be glorified because you bear fruit. You will be a fruitful life if you live in Christ Jesus. But today, from verse 1, it says, I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, it takes away. And every branch that bear fruit, it prunes that he may bear more fruit. So, in other words, if you are not in Christ, Christ is like a tree. Just like an example given unto, unto us here. It's like a tree. And you are engrafted into the tree. The book of Proverbs chapter 11 tells us that we were not originally the branch of the tree that we have been engrafted. We were not originally part of the tree. Israel, the Jewish, were originally part of the tree. But because they rejected the gospel, and therefore those, that the, the Gentiles like me and you, the people that the, the gospel was not originally meant for, we embraced the gospel and the Lord engrafted us. It's just like taking a, 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 a branch of a tree of a tree of, of mango and you take it to the orange and you engraft it inside you drill it and you push it hard inside then it begin to get it begin to get nourishment from the tree and also begin to grow and before you know it the leaves begin to turn to become like orange and it begins to instead of producing mango then it begin to produce orange because it is it is not the branch is not the one that nourishes the tree it is the tree that nourishes the the branch so anyone that is not in Christ Jesus cannot bear fruit. And if you do not bear fruit, it will be difficult for prayers to be answered. And if the prayer is difficult to be answered, the life is not, is not going to be pleasant. So the purpose of going to church is for us to pray and we'll see the result of our prayers. Because a continuous uh, expectant of uh, something that you desire, it weakens your spirit, says the, uh, the Bible. When you continue to pray for something all year in and out, it destroys your thinking and it weakens your spirit. And as much as your spirit is being weakened, your faith life is reduced day by day. And you begin to lose faith. It is possible for somebody to have faith and to lose it at some point in life. That you now begin to lose, even to pray, the zeal to pray is no longer there. The passion to pray is no longer there. And when you lose your place of prayer, then you have been defeated already by the enemy. And that's the reason why we must trace our back to how we can live in Christ. Because that is the only way our Christian journey will be very pleasant. And everything that we do will be encouraged. Our prayer life will be encouraged. Your Bible reading life will be encouraged. And your evangelism life will be encouraged. Because you speak and it happens. Because you pray and it is answered. And this cannot be except you live in Christ Jesus. I am not the one that said that. It's the Bible that said that. He said, if you abide in me, verse 7, and my words in you, you shall ask anything, and it shall be done. Any of your desire, desire of your heart shall be done to you by my Father which is never. Like I was telling you, you are a grafted branch, and therefore you need to be more extraordinarily careful. The Bible tells us in that book of uh, Romans that if it did not cause God anything to cut away the original branch, which is the Israel, Israelite, then it will not be difficult for him to uproot, to remove that engrafted that is not productive and not fruitful. Because you cannot exist in the branch. You cannot exist in the, in the tree for nothing. 
you are engrafted in the tree for a purpose. And the purpose is to bear fruit that you may be glorified by the Father. Romans 11, 16 to 22. Let's see what it says. For if the, Living in Christ Jesus. For if the first fruit is holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches were broken off, and you being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them became a partaker of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Do not boast against the branches. But if you do boast, remember, remember that you do not support the root, but the root supports you. You will, stay, you will say then, branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well said, because of unbelief they were broken off, and you stand by faith. Do not be hofty, but fear. For if God did not spare the, the natural branches, he may not spare you either. Mm -hmm. Therefore, consider the goodness and severity, severity of God on those, who fell, on those who fell severity. But towards you, goodness, if you continue in his goodness, otherwise you, you also will be cut off. Mm -hmm. You see that? So the engrafted branch is engrafted into the vine for the purpose of bearing fruit. But if the engrafted branch is, that is supposed to be bearing fruit is not receiving the necessary nourishment that is supposed to receive from the branch, I mean from the vine, the Bible says, if it did not cause God to remove the original branch, it will not be difficult for God to, re to remove also the engraft or engrafted branch from the vine. Amen. Amen. Living in Christ. Living in Christ, living in Christ. Many people are in the church, but they are not in Christ. Many people are prayer warriors that are not in Christ. Many people are evangelists that are not in Christ. Many people are church leaders that are not in Christ. Many people are church workers, cleaners that are not in Christ. So that is why sometimes we get to a point where the life becomes very empty. Because when you are in Christ, it's like passing a current. You see, the, the way we pass some, some of the basic instruments, they go, they have to go to the power socket before they can bring out the, the, the voice or the melody that you want from them. Ordinarily, if you remove them from the power socket, if you play anything, you might not, you might not necessarily hear anything from them. Is that true of us? But when the socket goes to the power, the socket, the power socket, then you begin to the purpose of the, of, the, of the equipment begin to show. The same way it is when a Christian is not in Christ, when you are not in, uh, uh, plugged into the power socket of God, then you become like empty vessel in the, in the church. Everything that is said in the church, it, it will not mean any, any meaning to you. The message will not mean any meaning to you. The song, you are not connected. The praying, even if I conduct the Holy Ghost service, you might not receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, when we, when we minister the Holy Spirit, it does not take over. I used to tell us, God does not take over yourself from yourself. He wants cooperation from you in order to give you whatever He wants to give you. He wants your cooperation before He can speak His word to you. He wants your cooperation before His word can penetrate into you. But if you give a kind of nonchalant attitude to the word of God, it will be useless to your soul. And that is why we are I'm calling today through the help of God that we're more supposed to know how to be in the church and living in God. Not to sit in the church and be, in the, be connected to the pastor, but living in, in Jesus. That's why I started by the foundation. By letting us know one thing, the first one is that Jesus is the vine, God is the vine dresser, and we are the branches. So that is the foundation of the message. You must understand that you are a branch, but if the branch is not is useless, is not connected to the vine, the vine can I mean the branch can be removed from the vine because it is easy to remove the engrafted than to cut off the branch. I want to give you an example of what I'm saying. If you have a tree that you drip with a chisel or something, then you put you cut another another tree that you don't want, the branch of another tree you don't want, you fix it into that one that you want. You fix it very tight because you want that to receive the nourishment from that tree so that he can also begin to produce on it. Then, all of a sudden, 
you want to receive that nourishment of orange because this one is, a, is another uh, seed that is called guava, for instance, or orange, uh, mango. And all of a sudden, it's actually re receiving nourishment, but it's bringing mango. Instead of bringing the orange that you want from it, then it is easy for you to just pull it out because you are the one that drill and squeeze it into the hole. But if it was originally so, if it was a branch of the orange, or you cannot pull it unless you get a cutlass. Or you get something to cut it with. But the one to pull out is very easy. So that is where I want us to see ourselves as we continue in this message. That you are a grafted branch into the vine. And therefore you need to understand how to live in the vine. Which is Christ Jesus. Because if you don't understand how to live in the vine, it's just a matter of time you find yourself dried. Unfortunately, I do not have trees here. I would have shown any tree that is caught. You cut a branch from the tree. It's just a matter of time when you leave the branch on the tree, on the floor. After a few days, when you come back, there, what happened to the branch that you cut? What happened to the leaves? It will dry. So any branch that is cut from the vine will dry within a second, within some minutes, within some days. That is the way many Christians are. If you sit in the church, it does not matter when you got your, give your life to Jesus, whether recently, currently, or you have given it for a long time. If you do, it's your responsibility to be sure that you are connected to the branch, I mean to the vine, and that you live in Christ. Living in Christ means connected to the, to the vine. So I want you to follow me bit by bit as I lay the foundation of the message. I go further by reading from 1 Corinthians 5, 17. When you are in Christ, then you discover that old things are gone and you are living a new. That is one of the things you discover when you are in Christ Jesus. You discover that all things are gone away and all have become new. I'll give you an example. I told you the first two passages is for foundation. If an engrafted branch goes into the main vine, it begins to receive nourishment and it begins to, everything about the orange will be passed to the mango branch and it begins to bring out its fruit. That is why you know, because you are already, you are a branch of a tree that cannot produce good result. You are a branch of a tree that is fruitless and you are engrafted into the tree that is productive. You are engrafted into the, into the vine of Christ. So what you see that everything about you become totally different. First Corinthians 5, 17, what does it say? Therefore, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, mm. he's a new creation, mm. all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If any man be in Christ, all things have gone what? Passed away, and all have become new. If any man be in Christ, all things have passed away, and all have become now look at the way he says. He said, "If, in other words, people can be in the church and not be in Christ. That is why he put, if any man therefore be in Christ, he is a new creation, and all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If, otherwise, he would have said, because you are in Christ Jesus, all things have passed away. All have become new. But because." Apostle Paul knew that it could be possible in the church of Corinth that many people could be in the church and not in Christ. Many people be, 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 might be calling themselves the body of Christ and not be engrafted or branch that belong to, to the vine. That is why he put if. When you are reading English and you come across a word that says if, which means maybe or peradventure, because there might be some people that are not. So if you are truly the meaning is that if you are truly in Christ, all things are supposed to be what? Gone away. And all are supposed to be what? New. So that is the difference between people that are in Christ and people that are seated in the church. People that are in Christ, every old thing in their life will be gone and everything will become new. In other words, because they have changed roots, they have changed vines, they are no longer vines that belong to the devil. They are not vines that belong to Christ. And therefore, they gain 
or they get their new nourishment from the roots from Christ and no longer from the roots of the devil. Therefore, there will be what? Changes. Automatic changes. Because they have changed masters. Change masters. But if there is no changes, if there are no changes, then we begin to look at us whether am I really in Christ Jesus? Am I really in Christ Jesus? What has actually changed between now and then? What has changed between now that I'm in Christ and when I was not in Christ? Don't forget in the book of John that we just read, because Jesus Christ is the vine and we are the branches. Then therefore, we must, since we are getting nourishment from the water, the roots, and the flesh of Christ, then we must be what? Christ-like. You cannot be getting nourishment from a tree of orange as a branch and you are producing mango. It's not possible. And that is why the Bible says, if we are in Christ Jesus, all things must be gone away and all must be become new. Because you have changed your standards, you have changed platforms, you have changed masters, and you are now on the platform of Christ Jesus. So your orientation, your new idea, your new belief, everything becomes new in you. And the new, that is where human beings change their heart, your thinking. You see, when you put information on the computer, all you need to do is to delete it yourself for it not to be there anymore. If you want to change everything on the memory, every information on the memory of the computer, you need to delete it yourself. But in human being, there's no way to delete. The only way to delete is to get new information in human being. So the new information, just like putting Coca-Cola in the cup, if you want to turn the Coca-Cola in the cup to water, all you need to do is to get a bottle of water and you keep, in, drop, keep on dropping on the Coke that is in the, in the cup. Keep, on, keep pouring it on it. Keep pouring it. And you see the coke overflow from the cup and um, getting flow, uh, flush away until the water will turn to the, the thing, the content of the cup will come out plain like water. That is the way information of human being is changed. Unless you get new information that you in Christ, like you get new nutrition from the vine that is in Christ, that's when you become new. Otherwise, you cannot be new. You come to the church, sit down with the mind of before. The message, like a Sunday school teacher was telling us, the message was going on, you hardly grab a little bit of it. Everything that's going on in the church, you hardly receive a little bit of it. Now, the time the Holy Ghost is there, you, don't, you are not focused. The time of the Holy Ghost ministration is there, you are not focused, and they say, because if you if you are not focused, there's no way you cannot you can receive the Holy Ghost. See, I cannot be thinking about some other things of the world. Then they are ministry, even if the pastor plays hand hand on me. I call if I call you and I say, Come and receive the Holy Ghost. And you come to the front and I place my hand on you. I pray. If I pray for one hour, you will not receive it if you are thinking about something else. The only way to receive the Holy Ghost is to be ready and has God's, you, your heart must be open unto him. God, this is the time I want it. The same thing applies to the messages. You have to take it serious like you are taking your class messages in your schools. Like you take your, your lectures in the school. That's the way to grow spiritually. Every good student starts from classroom. When the teacher is speaking, how they take their notes, how they record it, whatever they want to do to make sure that they get as much information from the teacher as possible regarding the courses that they are doing in class. And go back home to begin to study it and memorize and reverse. That is when they can become what? Good student in the exam hall. But when we come to the church, the heart is not open. The mind is not open. No taking of notes. And then they just come to church, sing and dance and go back home then the old things will not be gone away. All will still become old. And it will not be like you are putting a new cloth to patch up the part, to patch up the places that it turned from the old garment. It's that, it would just be like you are putting new wine in the old wine skin. It will just be contaminated. 
and you have you not be living like somebody that have corrupt salvation. So today I want to focus on living in Christ Jesus. If you are truly in Jesus, everything must become new. And everything that will become new does not happen by magic or automatically. They happen by you paying attention and making it happen. Because so many people believe salvation is by magic. Once I confess Jesus Christ and I sit down in the church, then my life begins to take the dire direction that the Lord wants to take. No, it doesn't happen like that. It happens by your concentration and determination. When you are determined to say, I am changed now. I am a new person. So for everything, other things will become new, then you are the one to put the information in to yourself whenever you get connected, anytime you come to the church. From the beginning of the service to the end of the service. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. He says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in what? In Christ, in Christ Jesus. You see, so when you are in Christ Jesus too, there is no condemnation of sin. But when you are not, it doesn't finish there. He said, those who no longer live according to what? According to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So in other words, if you are still living in the flesh, in the church, if you are not connected with the vine, because it's only when you connect to the vine that is spiritual, that you get spiritual life. If you are still living in the past and sitting in the church, there is no way you can be out of the hole. And when you are not out of the hole, there will, there will be constantly continuous condemnation. It's only those who are in Christ Jesus that is no condemnation. And being in Christ does not mean that you just speak it and claim it. Because I used to hear many people saying, you don't, nobody can tell you who you are not. You are what you think you are. You are what you say you are. You can say you are something that you are not you are do, do, doing different things, isn't it? Somebody can claim to be born again and, and be living like someone that is, that is lawless. I was yesterday night, midnight, I was listening to a, a minister of God was preaching. And he was mentioning the situation of some, the church of Corinth. And it, some of the sin that they commit. He said, even though they commit sin, they are still Christian. They are still born again. That does not change the fact that they are born again. That does not change the fact that they are giving their life to Jesus. So, when anybody talks to you in this church and say you don't dress well, you don't do something, tell them you cannot condemn me. I say, ah, ah. Which one is it? So, he's trying to, he's trying to make his, his church member confident in sin. That is what I see that message to be. You are trying to make your, to develop some, some radical and stubborn Christian. Otherwise, at the end of the day, they will play his game back to him one day, the same pastor. Because if you can bring up, because that's the way of bringing, bringing up re, uh, uh, rebellious members. How can you be speaking about the church of uh, uh, Corinth and you say, let's see, they still in the church, they have people that fight, they have people that do this, they have people that do this. Yes, they are believers. So don't let anybody speak to you that you are not a believer. Church of Corinth is a believing church. They speak in tongues. They, it said they, they lay hands upon the sick and the sick recover. They do many things. Yet, because they are the children of God. Don't let anybody call you in the name that you are not, you don't be it. You are a child of God. I say, ah. That is not exactly what Apostle Paul said about the church of Corinth. It was not all the church members of Corinth that were rebellious. Do you understand that? Apostle Paul did not tell us every one of them were behaving like that. He only said some people behave like that in the church. So he was writing. He got a report. He was not with them. He, he received a letter and he was writing a letter back to them. This passage of that 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, they are letters of Apostle Paul. And the letter came as a report of what he received from Corinth. Information he received. And he replied then, I have information that some of you behave like this. Some of you are still committing adultery. Some of you are still fornicator. That was why he was dealing. That was what he was dealing with. He did, it was not everybody in the church that was living like that. So we cannot use that now to justify our own members that are living in corrupt kinds of Christianity. So I discover in this end time that ministers and people only extract from the Bible what favor them, what lifestyle they want to live. And it cannot happen like that. We cannot be in Christ like that. We cannot be new. 
Because the reason why we come to Christ is because we want to be new, isn't it? We want to be believers. We want to be different. But somebody that wants to be different, he now comes to Christ, then he wants to still carry his handbag of lifestyle before to still remain in Christ. It is not possible. The only way to do that is when we want to deceive ourselves. And believe me, there are many churches that still stay in church, uh, in, in, in self-deception in this end time. So, anyone that is in Christ, there is therefore no condemnation. It's condemnation. Because the minister yesterday was saying that, don't let anybody condemn you. You are a child of God no matter what you do. You can make me stay like the church of Corinth. Don't let anybody condemn you. That, see, there is condemnation only for those who are not in Christ Jesus. And it's not that you pick people to condemn. As I'm speaking now, I cannot be picking say, Samuel or Israel or, or Priscilla. You are like this until I see something in them, isn't it? You can't pick on people and begin to talk what you have not seen in them. So sometimes when you are actually correcting, some people call it condemnation. You cannot condemn me. You cannot condemn me. That word is very fast from so many people. And it's not actually condemnation. Even sometimes when you are trying to correct them, they still call it what? Condemn. You cannot be in Christ if you want to experience your old lifestyle. You cannot be in Christ if you want to live by your standard and not Christ's standard. You cannot be in Christ if you don't want to eat from nourishment of Christ. You want to just eat your own that you used to eat before. It got some point in the life of the children of Israel. When they, when they got into the wilderness, they shouted at Moses, said, Moses, we, are, we miss all those kind of our delicious food in Egypt. Why did you bring us here to come and kill us in this bush? Why did you do this to us? In Egypt, we are eating our onion. How many people have read that in the Bible? We read our spaghetti, our onion. They mention many good food in Egypt that we were eating. In other words, they want to live with Christ in newness of life, but they do not want to abide by all the struggles that go with it. See, whenever you want to make a change, there must be a kind of rumbling. There must be a kind of shaking up before the change can take place. I gave an example of a Coca-Cola in the cup. When you put something inside it, then the gas will flare up and all the, the water will be, you, as you are pushing the water, there will be rumbling and shaking until that Coca-Cola goes out of the cup completely and the water will turn white. Another example is when you want to fry in the, in, the, in, the, in the kitchen. You put hot oil on fire. And you want to put your grinded, maybe tomato or whatever thing, paste that you've grinded, and you want to put it into it. Do you think it will just quit quiet when you throw it inside? How does it sound? Somebody can give me, uh -huh, our sister has been in the kitchen before. Now, when you put it, if you are not careful sometimes, if you put it at once, what happens sometimes? It will do as if you want to catch fire. Whoosh! So, whenever there is going to be a change, it's not going to be comfortable. That is what always pushes many people away from Christ. The moment of change. The moment of change. The moment of change. Change is not easy. Change is not comfortable. It is not palatable. It is not what you bargain for. But if you endure, the change will happen. But if you resist the change, you will never be new. You will continue to be old. For you to be new, you need to encounter and embrace the change season. There's going to be a season of change. For instance, somebody that used to make easy money from stolen money, maybe a fraud, uh, a fraudster, or a drug trafficker, or a corrupt politician, and he gets born again. And when he got to some time, the money does not come the way it used to come before. Then he begins to struggle. He begins to struggle and pray. Struggle and pray. And all of a sudden, he gets back saying, no, I don't think I can continue this anymore. Then he goes back to his old friends. Then the person will never be able to change. To change is going to be very tough. It's not going to be very easy. You are going to be filled sometimes with rejection. Some of your good friends will, will abandon you. People that used to spend money with you before. You used to have a lot of friends when you have money. Now you, can't have, you don't have any friend anymore. Or maybe all the things you had before you have sold all of them to sort one trouble or the other because you don't want to make money the way you used to make it before. So those are the things that happen for people to be in Christ. Without going through that, you can never be in Christ. You have to embrace it. 
you have to desire and determine to go through it because it's not going to be a very easy experience. I like to tell people that are coming to Christ whatever they will face. Because coming to Christ and living in Christ is not something that is very comfortable. It's something you have to decide. It's a line you have to determine to live. Otherwise, you'll be going in and out of Christ. In and out of Christ. Whenever you forget something, you go back to pick it. And later on, you come back to Christ. Whenever you forget. And that life is a very dangerous life. It's a life that is full of a lot of things to restitute. A life that when you go in and out of Christ... The devil does not want you to come to go back to Christ again. Then he will tie you down in such a way that you will never be able to get up to Christ again. Because you have so many things to restitute. So many things to restitute. And before I forget, please, I wanted to say something when I come. Immediately I step on this uh, pulpit. In the, during the opening prayer in the morning, I mentioned in that the list. There was a list of people that got born again in the village where we went to. And I said 50. It could be more than 50, it could be less than 50, because I don't count it, but it was a very long list. So I said I would make the correction whenever I come to the pulpit, that I, I was not sure the, the number. It could be more than 50, it could be less than 50. I just said 50 because 50 came to my mind, just to let you know that. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Because everything we say, we have to be very careful of it. The Bible says every little or righteousness is what? Is what? What is this? that? Uh, Amen. Glory be to God. So, if you are not, there is therefore no condemnation for only those people that are not in Christ. This is not a statement, this is a fact. It's the truth. It's not something that you do by mathematics. If I am not in Christ Jesus now, there will be what? There will be condemnation. People will see something about me that will condemn, isn't it? That is what this person is saying. I can be going to church, I can be praying, I can be declaring that I'm a child of God. But my actions, my character, my attitude with people, to people, and towards everything, people will be saying something about it, and they will be condemning. That's what this party is telling us. You are supposed to be in Christ. You are supposed to be a child of God. Why can we find this in you? Why do you behave like this? Why are you talking like this? It, those are what they call what? Condemnations. Those are what they call color. And this person said, there is therefore now, now that you are in Christ Jesus, there's not supposed to be any condemnation. But only to those who do no longer live in the flesh, but in the spirit. In other words, if you still love the world and everything in the world, you are a person of flesh. You love to entertain your flesh and feed your flesh with whatever it likes. A lot of people will discover condemnation in you. There will be condemnation. There will be fault. People will find fault in one thing or the other. No matter how highly placed you are in Christ, you can be a bishop, you can be a pastor, you can be an evangelist, you can even be the least person in the church, ordinary member. If you are living in the flesh, if you are not living in the spirit and you don't bother about it, there will be so many condemnation. In other words, many faults people will find in you. That's what they call condemnation. When people find fault in you, it's what they call condemnation. Some people will say, are you not supposed to be a Christian? Why are you dressed like this? Even some unbelievers say that. Even when we Christians that we are, we are struggling with ourselves, say, don't worry about the way you dress. Your salvation is in your heart. But you see unbelievers that actually face you. I say, what are you doing different from me? You are not different from the way we dress. Why are you Christian? They will tell the believer like that. And believer will be telling the unbeliever, can you see so disgraceful result? So disgraceful. That, that reply I call is very disgraceful. When a believer now reply unbeliever to say, if my salvation is in my heart, don't worry about my body. Saying that to unbeliever is not a good defense. It's a, it's a very faulty defense. Now let us go quickly because of our time to see how do we not I mean, how do we now walk into Christ? To remain there, not to go there and come out, to remain in Christ Jesus. So that all these promises that I've said to you, you live without condemnation. And everything depends on you, like I used to say. God does not come down to make it happen to you, but he hears your prayer for grace. When you are praying for mercy and grace, he's ready to help you. But you must be willing and obedient. 
For instance, what am I saying by that? Because some, people, some, some Christians will say, no, I don't believe what you are saying. Because we live by prayers. You pray to God and He has to change you. It is true, you pray. But after I have prayed, after I have prayed, then myself, I brought myself to a point of sitting down among people. Then I saw somebody's wallet. After I have prayed that I am a Christian, I am changed, I'm no longer stealing. Then I saw somebody's wallet. I am supposed to be a Christian. I have prayed that God should help me not to steal again. That God should give me the grace to be a new person. After I have confessed Jesus Christ, that one is even too strong. Let me use cigarette. Cigarette or alcohol drinking. I have changed. I have prayed. Then I found myself in a party. I was invited to a party. And they were serving. I used to drink. Serving beer. Serving alcohol. Then they put one in my presence. I said, no, I'm a changed person, but just give me one glass. One glass. I'm born again. I don't drink plenty anymore. But it will go small small anyway. It's bit by bit. It's bit by bit. Or some people will have 5% or 15%. They reduce it to percentage. Amen. Amen. So that is what I'm talking about. God will not come at that point to come and hold your hand. Not to drink it. You are the one to decide to say, I do not want this anymore. Even though you have prayed, you need your will and decision to stand to say, this thing, I don't want to do it again. I want to live a new life. You must have self-will. There must be zeal and passion in you to stand to live in Christ Jesus. John, 1 John chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. 1 John 6 and 7. He who says he abides in him mm -hmm. ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Can you see that? Anyone that says, I abide in Christ, he didn't say how to pray or receive the grace to be out to also live like Christ. What does he say again? Read it again, brother. He who says he abides in him, he who says he abides in Christ, ought himself also to walk just as he walked. He supposed himself, he should be able to walk as Christ walked. I told us when I was laying the foundation of the message, when I was giving you a description of a vine and a, and a grafted branch. Once you are engrafted into Christ, you're supposed to live as he lived. If you are saying, I am in Christ, then how do I know that you are in Christ? It's by living as he lives. And how do I know how he lives or how he lived? It's by reading the Bible to make me know the ways that Jesus lived. How did he live? What did he do? What kind of man was he? Reading through the Bible will tell me all those information. And now when I, as soon as I know the information, then I begin to prayerfully ask God to make me that person that Jesus Christ was. That is the way to begin to live in Christ. Don't forget, we are talking about living in Christ. Living in Christ. You cannot live like somebody you don't read about, you don't know about. So the first thing to know is to hear about this message and to declare that you want to work with him and you want to be an engrafted branch into this van, and when you have proclaimed that and everybody knows that you have joined the fold, then you begin to do what? You must begin to live as he lived. And how do you do that? By reading about him. Learning from him. Matthew 11, 28 to 32, uh, uh, 30 tells us that. Learning from him daily. How did he live? Where did he go? How did he react to some situation? What did he like? What did he not like? And you go all get to his disciples. How did he train his disciples? And what did they do also? That's the what, that's the who I want to be. Now, as you begin to do all these things prayerfully, you begin to change from who you used to be to who Christ wants you to, to be. That is when you now begin to say, I am living in Christ Jesus. You don't live in Christ Jesus if you don't do what he do, if you are different from who your teacher is. That was the reason why Jesus Christ said in the book in the Bible, he says. In the book of John, to be precise, chapter 7. And some people call him master. He said, why do you call me master when you don't do what I do? How many people have read that place before? Why do you call me master? I am not your master. You know the reason why Jesus said that? The reason is written in the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 16. He says, whoever you submit yourself to obey, you become the slave of that person that you obey. You see that? So if they do not obey Jesus Christ, they are not what? They cannot call him master because he's not their teacher. So if I call myself a child of God, 
then I must be able to do what? Learning, studying, praying to become like what? Like God. So in other way, it is a wrong information or wrong expression for every Christian to say, nobody can be holy. Please, if you are a Christian and you say that with them, you have to stop saying that from today. That is not written in the Bible. Stop believing what is not written in the Bible. Bible never said at any point that you cannot be holy. Bible never said at any point that you cannot be righteous. So whatever the Bible does not say, if the Bible has made provision somewhere to say, oh, you children of God, you cannot be holy, you cannot be righteous, but just continue your then you begin to say, okay, that is possible. But it says, be holy as your father in heaven is holy. And it says, be righteous. For your God, for your Lord, your God is what? Is righteous. So therefore, what he's saying that he wants to learn how to be. Learning how to be is the journey to live in Christ. And when you are beginning to accomplish that, then you now begin to live in, in Christ Jesus. As I'm speaking, there are many people that are in the corridor of Christ. Passage of Christ, they are not in Christ. Because those who claim to live in Christ, they ought also to be walking as he walked. Seeking things from above. Those who are in Christ, they seek after the things that are above more than the things that they can, they can see physically. But those who are not in Christ, they pursue 100% everything physical in this world. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. If then you are raised with Christ. If then you are raised with Christ. Seek those things which are above. You see that? If then, in other words, if then you are in Christ, because those who are raised with Christ, according to Romans chapter 6, if you have been raised, if you are raised with Christ, verse 4 to 6, if you are raised with Christ, then you have to be a changed person. You have to wake up unto newness of what? Newness of life. Newness of that is not part of our message. I just want to bring something out of you quickly. 6 from verse 4. He said, therefore, Romans 6 from verse 4, therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was, was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in what? In newness of... So, if you have been buried with Christ, you will also resurrect into what? A newness of life. But if you are not buried with Christ, you cannot live in newness of life. You will just be the same person that you came to church and you will stay in the church forever and one day you will leave and you will not, different, you will not be different from the day you came. There are many churches that have trained people to be great work, prayer warrior. Prayer warrior that is, that the, the, what can I call it? Sinful prayer warrior. Troublemaker prayer warrior. Sinful evangelist. Radical I don't mean, I'm not saying spiritual radical. I'm talking about physical and worldly radical bishop. That is not what Jesus wants us to be. He wants us to be new people. Converted people that are dead to Christ and living in newness of life. Yes? Have you finished that, Colossians? Where Christ is. Sitting at the right hand of God. Read it again from verse 2. Verse 2. Set your mind on things above. Set your mind on things above. Not on things on the earth. Not on the things on the earth. For you died. For you died. For your life is hidden with Christ. Your Jesus. life is hidden in Christ Jesus. If the when when Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear. That passage is not finished. Your Christ is your life is living in Christ Jesus in what? In God. In God, yes. When Christ When you you are dead and your life is hidden in Christ Jesus in God. In other words, when you have experienced salvation, you are dead to sin and you are alive in Christ. That is when you say, I am in Christ Jesus. And whoever is in Christ Jesus, they are protected under in, secret, in the secret place under the shadow of the Almighty, Almighty God. That is why so many Christians are not protected by God. They are not covered by the blood. They are not defended even in the sleep, in the night. Because they are not in Christ. They are outside of Christ. You cannot, you cannot be defeated when you are in Christ Jesus. You cannot be frustrated or tormented when you are in Christ Jesus. And that is the reason why I have prayerfully asked God to help me to deliver this message to you today. Because I want a church, a protected church, a church that is covered 
in the secret place of Most High, under the shadow of, shadow of the Almighty God. He said, if you are dead with Christ, therefore you will be alive in Christ Jesus. You'll be alive in Christ Jesus. And Colossians says in verse number three that what? Can you read it again, brother? Three verse. Verse 3, verse 3, verse 3, 1, 3. For you died. Yes. And your life is hidden with Christ. You died. Once you died in that, your baptism, you resurrected, then your life, you have come to a newness of life. Therefore, your life is hidden in Christ Jesus, in the Lord Almighty. The next one quickly. Then, putting off Christ, putting on Christ. Romans 13, 11 to 14. Putting on Christ. And do this, knowing the time that now is it is it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Mm. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness, mm. and let us put on the armor of light. Mm. Let us uh, let us walk properly, as in as the day, day, not in rivalry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision, no for the make flesh. No provision for the flesh to fulfill its lot. Amen. Look at that. He said, This is the time. And do this, knowing that the time that the time is now. Time to wake out of sleep or slumber. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cut off the works of, the, of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk according and properly as in the day, not in robbery, drunkenness, not in lewdness and loss, not in strife and envy, but put on the whole, the, the Lord Jesus and make no provision for the flesh to fill his loss. You see that? So you have responsibility. To re of repentance. Responsibility of living opposite to where you started your journey from before you got to Jesus. That is why it says there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And that second Corinthians says, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, is a new creature. You cannot be in Christ Jesus with your old SS baggage. They need to be dropped. They need to be dropped somewhere. The lost, corruption, envy, Jealousy, pride, anger, fighting, rivalry, and the stuff. They need to be done. And it happens from your heart. It's not something you, if you do it on the body, you'll be acting. I need to say that before I conclude, as I want to go to the last Bible passage. You need to do it from the heart. It is your heart that must believe. It is your heart that must be changed. It is your heart, your repentance from your heart. If you repent from the body, you will be religious. You, and you will be struggling. But if you repent from the heart, your heart will be new. Your thinking will be new. Because you cannot do on the outside what is contrary to your thinking. Most of the things that we do in the physical, sometimes, they are the content of our thoughts. Because no matter how you push them, most of the things you think, you would, they will come back, they will come to life. They will come to manifest in your way, in the way you live. But if your heart is changed, you are repentant from your spirit, then the word of God will have a place to penetrate into your heart. And because the word of God is in placing all the old word, the whole knowledge, the whole experiences, then you become new in your spirit. And that newness begins to affect the body on the physical. And that's where people will recognize that this person must be in Christ. Because it's a different person that I used to know. It's no longer the same person that I used to know. Because we cannot commend yourself. People must commend you. According to 2 Corinthians in chapter 10. That you must, people must see the evidence that you are a child of God. And not you yourself saying, I'm a child of God. I just know that I'm a child of God. Whatever God says, I am, that is who I am. I don't care what you say about me. That is not important. If you are actually a child of God, people will also say you are, even though they don't like, like you. Whether they like you or not, they will confess that you are a child of God. They will confess that you are changed. And they will confirm that you are now in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 15 and Psalms 50, verse 5. 
2 Corinthians 5, 15. This is where we stop today in living in Christ Jesus. And that's where I'm going to summarize. Um, maybe you have not been following patiently since. And as I'm summarizing, the Lord, a whole message will make meaning to you by God's grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Living in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 15. And he died for all. He died for all. For those who live. Should no, live no longer. So that those who now live should live no longer for themselves. But for him who died for them. But for him who died for them and rose again. And rose again. For him who died for them and rose again. Now there is no better way to live in Christ than to understand this Bible principle of Second Corinthians chapter five verse fifteen. This is the one serious Bible verse that will help you on how to live in Christ, the way everything I've been saying since. Whatever I've been saying since might just mean the practical part of it. Some of you might not understand, some might be. But this one, even if you have missed any part of the words I've said from the beginning, this will confirm and will summarize the whole thing that I've said to you today. And I will say it quickly in this 30 minutes, I have 30 minutes more, and I will say it's this my story within five minutes and round up on time by God's grace. I have told this story in, in various house fellowships this week. And I'm going to say it again. Because it helps you to know how to start living in Christ Jesus. I told the story and I, I said, a, a young man that is called Caleb. Some places I gave it names, some I, don't, I didn't give it names. It depends on time I have in each of the house fellowships. I said, a young man called Caleb killed somebody. He committed murder and he was arrested. In some country, it will be life imprisonment. But in the country that he committed the murder, the penalty of the offense was death penalty. He had to die. So he was on the TV, on the news, that somebody that killed has been condemned and been judged, and the death penalty has been placed upon him. So he was waiting for the day that he would be executed by electricity. He was supposed to be electri electrocuted. And he was waiting, and a few days to the day he was going to die. An old man walks in. Through the court system, that they took him to the prison where, the, where, the, where Caleb was. And he met Caleb. He said, I am here. And some people told Caleb, somebody is here to die for you. The person has seen your news and he wants to die for you. He wants to be free and he will stay in for you. So Caleb was very happy that he was going to be free. That was the paramount thing to him that at least he was going to be free because somebody was willing to die. But the man said, no, it's not going to be told so free and so fast. You must be able to do something also for me. There are some ways I used to live. There are things I used to do. There are places I used to go. So I want you to do all those things for me. Why I would do your own for you. I would take your debt for you, but I want you to live my life for me. Because I love everything that I've been doing. People have been benefiting from many things that I've done. And people want to benefit more from it. I want you to continue living this life for me. And Caleb said, oh, with all pleasure I will do it. Because he was quickly in, in, a, in, a, in a rush. He, he, he just, he, you are just interested in going out of the jail and being free. But the man said, no, don't make it too fast. I want you to understand all this, my work and my ways of life very well. These are my ways of life. You are going to live my ways of life for me. But I'm going to die for you. That's what I mean by that. Are you prepared to do that? We make a covenant and you go out and I'll go in for you. Okay, let's say I'm ready. I will live all the rest of my life. For you, living the life you live. And the man said, okay, we have a deal. We have covenant. So the old man died for Caleb. And Caleb became a free man. But as, as soon as, after a few moments of, after a few days or weeks of being free, Caleb went back to his life. Caleb started enjoying himself. Caleb did not do any role of the old man. Caleb lied. Caleb drank. Caleb went to parties. Caleb forgot that somebody died for him. And I asked, in all those house fellowships, I asked questions from everybody. I said, 
Is that a rapture? Okay. It's a rapture, yes. Amen. Amen. You have to always wait for rapture. When you hear strange song, you just relax as if you are not going home. Amen. Amen. Glory. Sometimes as there was a noise of a train in our house. I told my husband, I looked through the window and said, Is that rapture? He said, Ah, ah. You're just. <laughs> Oh, you just scare people. <laughs> How can the child of God be scared of going home? Unless we don't know what we are doing here. Amen. So, as I was saying, Caleb did not live the life of the old man. Caleb was living his own life. And I asked question. I said, if Caleb eventually dies and he goes, he leaves the world and he meets the old man sometime in heaven. How do you think they will join this case there? What do you think the old man will tell him? And I told the people, I said, because of what the old man has done, the Lord was happy about him because he died for somebody's sin. And the Lord resurrected him. And the Lord put him on the seat, special seat beside him in heaven. And he was waiting and waiting and watching the affair of Caleb. He looked, because everybody that's there, they can see us. We cannot see them. Every dead person can see, but you can't see them again. So the old man was looking at the way Caleb was living in the beer parlor and drinking and smoking and dancing, and is waiting for him. So the day Caleb will go and see the old man in heaven, what do you want the old man to do to Caleb? Caleb will eventually go to the dead that he escaped. The dead that he didn't die, he will have to die there. And when somebody dies in heaven, what does that mean? they go to hell. The only death in heaven is eternal death in hell fire. Because he violated the covenant. He broke covenant. Caleb will be, will be termed as a covenant breaker, a double offender, a murderer, and a covenant breaker. So, the record of his death, of his murder case, will be open, will, will reopen before him. That is the way it is. When Jesus died for Jesus is the old man. If Jesus died for you, and he has committed to you to live his life for him, that's what 2 Corinthians 5.15 says. He died. Look at that. I read it again. 15. It says, And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. How many Caleb's do we have now? If you are a Caleb, you are not living in Christ. If you are a Caleb, you are not living for God. Once you are not living for God, you are not in Christ. So that's why I decided to use this story at the end of this message to tell you the basic picture, the clear picture of those that are not in Christ. Anyone that is not living for God, because he took your death, he took your pain, he took your sorrow, and he gave you his life to continue living for him. And you can, most of us cannot say we are living for God. If you are not making him happy, you are not living for him. If you are living in your own way, you are doing whatever you like, you are not living for him. So many people, so many people go to church whenever they feel like. So many people do things that God loves whenever they feel like. We have a lot of messages coming out now because of our, our shortcoming in the church. A lot of messages that is not biblical. Even Church of God has given unbeliever a right to preach. Unbeliever are not preaching. They go and buy our Bible. They will not preach our Bible to us because of failure of the church. They will not begin to tell us our first. They are not doing that. You imagine somebody that is drinking, teaching Bible, a beer drinker, teaching people Bible how to live better. That is what we have caused. We have made them happy. We have given them a chance to preach our Bible to us. Because we are not living the standard of he that died for us. Have you ever heard that it was recorded in the Bible, Brother Samuel? Recorded somewhere in the Bible that at Jesus there was a condemnation against Jesus. And people call Jesus a thief. People, this man was full of gluto. He took money from many people. Have you ever heard about that? Even though there were many Keno at that time, Jesus was traveling. See, the distance, there is distance between, when I went to Syria, I saw the distance between Syria, Damascus, and Jordan, where Jesus Christ was baptized. It was even half journey, because he came all the way from Jerusalem. 
which means you will come all the way from Jerusalem to Damascus before you begin to go to Jordan. It's a long journey. So, it will require a donkey, horse, or canoe to do the journey. And Jesus traveled everywhere like that, preaching gospel. He never had, he didn't buy a canoe. He, because he traveled so much to buy a canoe. The disciples, they travel everywhere. Apostle Paul went everywhere, including Africa. He didn't buy a canoe. Neither did we, he never read in the Bible that Apostle Paul bought a donkey or he bought a horse because he traveled so much. But our minister of nowadays, they will say, because I travel so much, I have to buy four yet. Don't forget Paul said the same thing. He said, if, if it is food that will make my brother to sin, I will do what? I would rather not eat it than to make my brother to go to hell. But our current preachers are not, they don't care about what may make anybody offended. Whatever you, you just say, whatever you like, say it. I don't care what you are saying. We have to care. If it's somebody, I, I love I love one man that is making there's one minister of God that is trying to make moves to change his way. But it is it, too late before he decided to. But evangelist Benny Hinn. He decided to sell off. Is yet, and he decided not to take to charter plane anymore. He want to be going into plane like every other person from now, because it was like a shame for him. People got in too much; they got close to him, they spoiled his name. Even he got to places when he go and preach, they raise play card off. He say, "Fake, fake thief, robber." He, he had to be that before he know that he has to change. So do we need to wait until people begin to spoil our name? Begin to find fault in us? We must live for he that died for us. We must watch him closely. Even though we have money for the plane, we can use it for many other things. So that it's not because we don't need it. Let us be frank. They need the jets. I'm telling you the truth. Sometimes the journey of four hours, you can be two days on the road. But Jesus lived like that. We must live like that too. If the journey is three, then let us do it. For the sake of people that will say they buy yet. If the journey is four, then let us endure. For the sake of people that will say, oh, look at what they use for the money. That is the reason why we, we, we discipline ourselves. It's not because, because I need this, I have to care. I don't care what people say. No, we have to care. Because what they will say with their mouth, it will destroy the whole body of Christ. Now, because of all those kind of lifestyle now, Rolls Royce, Jeep, and many cars that minister of the gospel are driving, now people begin to say, don't pay tithe again, it's not biblical. It's not in any place in the Bible not to pay tithe. I've not read I've read Bible from Revelation, I mean Genesis to Revelation. I didn't see anywhere that don't pay tithe. Some pastors are running away from the truth because they don't want those people to attack them. Some of them will say, eh, it is true. Bible did not, there's nowhere in the Bible that the Bible compulsory tight. The Bible actually compulsory tight. It is compulsory in the Bible. Because they don't want those people to insult them. They just they just try to be innocent and be neutral. The Bible in Malachi actually said it's compulsory. It mentioned clearly that it's compulsory. In fact, calling on the punishment that will come. Because the reason is that they don't come from the purpose of the tithe. The purpose of the tithe is for the provisions in the house, to run the house of God. And to also provide for the Levites, the people that work there. Now, if you say it's no longer compulsory, and everybody comes to church, they put one part in the offering there. And the rent of the church is 500 every month. And because it's not compulsory, people put whatever they like in the offering. How do they pay all those things? That was the reason why God made it compulsory. It was compulsory in the Bible. But because these people are so more than many and overwhelmingly attacking minister of God, so minister of God don't want to put their head in their trouble. They all say, it is true, it's not compulsory. Uh, it's just anybody that wants to, it's personal blessing. If you want personal blessing, God will bless you. If you don't want blessing, you give. And you see some of them say, what about uh, 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 this computer man, what is his name, or Facebook? They say, what about, he, he doesn't pay any time, he has money. God does not say people that pay tithe will have money. That's not what he says. He only says if you want to have peace. Is that what he says? If you want to have peace, unbeliever can have money without tithe, but they might not have peace without tithe. 
and they must not have any, any, any kind of good life without the time. But that's not what I'm going today. I just want to tell people to be in Christ. Because if you are in Christ, you will understand everything about him. His word will not be debatable. You will not debate his word. You will not begin to look for, is it true, is it not true. Because you are already in him. Don't forget in our Bible, in Sunday school today, we are saying that the fivefold ministry is, involved, is necessary. But one of the reasons why it is important is that so that we will not be tossed left and right with the doctrine of the word. If you are in Christ, you will be settled with the word of God. Somebody cannot tell me now. Say, don't be, tight is not biblical. Something that I have known since I was young. Can you believe that somebody is not telling me when at my age, all of a sudden, we don't know where the message comes from. Then somebody just suddenly see it in the Bible. After several thousands of years, people have been reading the Bible and paying tight. Somebody now see it in 2018. Come on. Can't you believe his satanic plan to wither the church? Because of the extravagant life of preachers. That is why we must be modest. The Bible teaches that we must be modest. Even if you are anything, behave as if you don't have anything. You are the head, behave as if you are servant of all. Don't behave that you show yourself as if, oh, one day I was somewhere and somebody was saying that, uh, somebody that brought me to the place was saying that you can never know that he is the leader of his ministry. And they have branches. And the person was saying that, I said, it's Jesus that is the leader of the ministry, not me. I'm just a, an apostle. He's supposed to go in from one place to the other preaching the gospel. So we must be modest. We must be simple. No matter what height God takes us to, simplicity is what we find in Jesus. Modesty is what he displayed. And that was no reason. If you are modest and simple, nobody will lay any charge against you. He will not show up. If Jesus was using all those money, if Jesus was living the way Judas advised, Jesus, Judas also advised him that, oh, master, let us use the money to do this. Oh, this one that we want to bring, that's one, la, la, master, yeah, we can sell it and make a lot of money. We got, Judas was bringing many advices. But if they follow all those advice, the name of Jesus would have been ruined. His ministry would have been aborted. But he did not put, he said, if anybody wants to waste oil, let them waste it on my leg, on my head. That is their own desire. I cannot collect it and go and sell it. That's not what it's meant for. This woman wants to do this, let her do it. Today, you see churches where they collect earrings and chain of people. And at the end of the day, you see members of the church go to market to go and sell them. I have seen it. I'm not just talking what I didn't see. They will say, if you don't have money, collect them. Have you ever anybody that has been in a church where they remove earrings and chain and throw it in the offering box? If you have seen it before, please wave your, wave your hand. Earrings and chain, they will throw it because the pastor says so. If you don't have anything, whatever you have, it will shoot. People collect you and throw it in the offering, bo offering box. Then later on, they now begin to sell. God has not told us to be business people. Even the books we write, the tapes we do, they are not supposed to be marketable. They are supposed to be free. If you cannot make it free because you have sent money, tell people that any amount they want to pay. Not open shop for them. We have this book, any amount you can pay because we printed it. You can give a secretary, he will give you one book, whatever you can afford. Not put price tag on things like you are selling two pounds. They will see on the TV, this book is two for three pounds. Three for fifty pounds. They say, we have a deal for this one, a deal. How many people have heard that before on TV? They have deal. For tapes, deal for video. God has not said we should do that. Those are the things that bring names calling, condemnation, and different kind of things. And the Bible says, if you are in Christ Jesus, there's no one, there's no condemnation. It is the condemnation that make people abuse us, and they drag the name of Christ Jesus Christ in the mud. Let us be modest, be simple, and do what the Lord did. Live His life. For him, it's a covenant. It's a covenant. It's not just a mere word. It's a covenant that he dies so that we can live for him. And anybody that refuses to do that, they will face him one day like Caleb. And they will die the dead is supposed to die the second time. And they also receive their punishment in hellfire if they behave like Caleb. Because it's a covenant. Psalms 50 verse 5 told us it's a covenant. 
What does five feet? So fifty as we round up fifty five. What does it say? Gather my saints together to me. Gather my saints together to me. Those who have made a covenant with me. Yes. By sacrifice. Can you see that? Caleb made covenant. You know when you make the covenant, you don't know. When you betray the covenant and you are placed before the judge, you will not know that you have what? You have broken the covenant agreement. Those who have made covenant with me with what? With sacrifice. Caleb made covenant with his mouth. You see, covenant can be made anyhow. You don't need to write to make covenant. You don't need to do what? To write. There was two, the story of a lady and a boy as I close. They stay under a tree one day in the bush. And the lady was telling the young man, say, whatever happened to me, I will never let you go. I will marry you. And the boy too is saying that if I don't marry you, I will never have a child in this world again. Anybody I marry, I, I, I pray that God will not make that marriage fruitful. That's what the boy said. And the lady too said the same thing. Because the, the boy was telling the girl to say, let us make covenant. The girl said, no, don't let us make blood covenant. He said, no, let's use our blood to make it. The girl said, no, I don't want But let me give you the word of my mouth. My, the word of my mouth is okay. I don't want to do blood covenant. And the boy just said the word. And they, they went away. After many years, the boy decided to marry somebody else. The girl too decided to marry somebody else. Believing that the covenant is just Baba. And the girl was saying, thank God we didn't do the blood covenant. Thank God, it was just only word. So they did not know as they said the word that day, as they spoke the word, the Lord, God is the God of covenant and promises. That is why God loves people keeping promises and covenant. You see in the book of Ezekiel 18, he said, if they have paid all their vows and returned from those they have stolen from, they will not die. Is that what it says? Yes. Restitution. Yes. Now, in that, on that day, what they didn't understand is they were not alone there. Spiritually, they had some spirit. Spirit were living around them. And as they said those words, the spirit said, Amen. As the boy said his own, the spirit said, Amen. Because the heavenlies understand covenant. They knew that it was a covenant. So they said, Amen to it. So when the man married several years, there's no child. The lady too married the other side, several years, there's no child. They were now praying around, looking for solution. By the time they got to see the secret of their problem, they said, you made covenant many, many years ago with a lady. And the lady too got her home and said, you made covenant many years ago with a man that you will never have a child for anybody. Unless two of you marry, you can never have a child. You said, but we, we just a word like that. So they not told, they not told them that the word you said, there were spirits around you. They understand covenant. Immediately you said it, they said amen and they seal it on two of you. So covenant is as more is very strong. I mean, agreement with word is the same as when you write it down or when you use blood to do it. Once you just say that two of you agree on it, it is registered and everything that is a covenant. So any betrayal of it will cause trouble in the future. There are many people that are suffering today as a result of what they said they are not keeping to people, to friends, even to the whole boyfriends or the whole girlfriends. Say, I will see you, I will marry. It's true I will marry. Is this that will happen? And they made covenant and promises. And those covenant and promises were witnessed and they did not keep it. And therefore they have to pay for it. In one way or the other. I want you to stand on your feet today. If you have broken the covenant with God, this is the time to deliver yourself. And if you are broken with a man, and you need or a woman, and you need to be free today, this is the time you need to be free. Because your life must move Forward, spiritually and physically. Amen. But let us deal with the spiritual first. Because when we set our problem with God, our problem physically is solved already. I want you to say to God, Lord, I am a covenant breaker. Lord, I am a covenant. Don't be afraid to say that to God. Amen. Tell him, I am a covenant breaker. I am a covenant breaker. I made covenant with sacrifice with you. I made covenant with when I gave my life to you. And when you die for my sin. But I have not been faithful with my covenant. I have been a liar. I have been unfaithful. I have been a criminal. I have been a, a thief. I have been, my, even my heart is full of immorality. Father, forgive my sin. 
begin to tell him in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, have mercy on me. I have broken the covenant that I made with you with sacrifice. The covenant of living your life for you while you take away my life of sin and you die for me. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. I am here before you today. Have mercy on me. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Brother Israel. Yes, that is the position I want you to be for this kind of prayer. Yes, yes, begin to say, Brother Israel. Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Forgive me, Lord, I'm a covenant breaker. Have mercy on me, Father. In the name of Jesus. Have mercy on me. I have not been living your life. I have not been living the fake life. I have not obeyed or kept the covenant agreement that you made with me, Father. Oh, Lord, please forgive me. Ancient of days, have mercy. King of glory, I beg you. Ancient of days, forgive me. Father, have mercy on me. Because of your blood that was shed at Calvary, because of the death, because of your resurrection, have mercy on me, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Jesus, because you are forgiven. If I had time today, or if we have midweek programs, I would have shifted this to a night vigil. It's something that a lot of people are going to be free from. Covenant breaking is very tough. Covenant breaking, promises violated, hold unkept. We have all done that once in our life. Promising and failing. Especially when some people put their mind so much on our promises and covenant. Even in, in, some people are here that it's not the first person you spoke to about marriage that you marry now. Somebody that agreed, say, oh, we are going to marry and you are planning, it's not the person you are finally with at the end of the day. That's the covenant breaking. Vow violated. Lord, every covenant that I have made in life with man or anybody, every promise that I have given anyone that I, that I did not obey, Every promise is unkept. Co broken covenant. Broken agreement. On my part. That I did not obey. Father have mercy on me today. Cancel them with your blood today. In the name of Jesus. Every covenant broken. Every agreement violated. Father have mercy on me Lord. In the name of Jesus. Father cancel them with your blood. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Re iba ake zaima apote morobole ma alika. Wa iba ake zaima apote morobole ma. Re iba ake zaima apote morobole ma alika. In Jesus name we pray. Can you give me five more minutes? I'm late already. I just want us to deal with it. The reason is that I want some people to be free all over. So that whatever you do now begin to show, miracle begin to happen. Because these are the things that hold some blessings sometimes. This covenant breaking can make somebody go to any part of the world and not bring anything back home. They are, they are able to do that. I just told you a story of a boy and a girl. They couldn't do anything unless they go back again. Unless they prayerfully break the covenant before they can have children in their marriages. These are the reason why a lot of people run around in churches. They have been in Europe for many years, 20, 30, and they cannot just see anything. Because of covenant broken. Some people even broke covenant with their parents. They don't know it's a covenant. When a child says, Mama, when I go to Europe, I will take you out of this poverty. It's a covenant. And until the woman died, you didn't bring anything to her. The woman expected, expected until she died, nothing happened. It's a covenant broken. Because the woman put all her mind on, on you. Some parents, they depend on one child. They say, this child, I believe it will take me out of trouble one day. And the child grows up and forget the mother in the village. It's a covenant breaking. Breaking arrangement. You are going to cry to God today. Oh, Lord, my father. Oh, Lord. Every trouble that I brought upon myself. Every trouble breaking against my life. As a result of covenant that I broke. An agreement that I violated. By the power in the name of Jesus. I command it to depart from my life today. And let them be cancelled with the blood of 
Jesus. Every covenant is broken. Every cross has come into my life. That is bringing trouble to my life. Bringing trouble, problem, demotion, confusion, and trouble and wellness and backsliding and stubbornness and stagnancy against my life. Be broken today. Be broken today. Be broken today with the blood of Jesus. 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 In Jesus name we pray. And you pray this one. Some people even use their mouth to even issue calls concerning their promise. If I don't do it, let this happen to me. And at the end of the day, they don't do it. You will pray to God. Or some people even release calls say, God, look at what this person has put me. Because of him or her, look at what I have done. And he or she does not even fulfill the promise. I pray that as from today, this will happen to our own life too. This will never, and the person will begin to issue calls. Oh Lord, my Father. Oh Lord, my Every cause or incantation. That is placed upon my life and destiny. As a result of covenant broken. A hold agreement that is violated. Blood of Jesus. You are the Lord that went to the cross for my sake. You took my cause on the cross. Break every cause concerning my life today. Release me with your blood in the name of Jesus. We are in the Lord God of Elijah. We are in the Lord God of Elijah. We are in the Lord God of Elijah. Arise by fire. Set me free today from every causes, incantation, evil decree that has been released upon my life, that has been put out upon my destiny because of the covenant that I violated, because of the agreement that I violated, because of the covenant that I have betrayed. Father, remove me from my life. With your blood, remove them from me. With your blood, remove them from me. With your blood, remove them from me. Cancel every crisis. Remove every incantation. Destroy every spell. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Reima Aken Zaima Boteboro Boliba Ali. Waima Aken Zaima Boteboro Boliba. Yeema Aken Zaima Boteboro. Waima Aiko. Reima Aken Zaima Boteboro Boliba. Lord Hatma. Lord Hatma. In Jesus' name we pray. Finally, you pray this one. Oh Lord, my Father. Send your Holy Spirit today to liberate me from wherever, anywhere that covenant, covenant breaking causes have tied me to. That agreement violated demons have tied me to. Release me today and set me free. In the name of Jesus. Wherever covenant breaking demons are fighting, wherever agreement violating spirit are tied by destiny to, release me today. Release me today. Release me today. Release me today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the Your word says, shall touch you of the mighty be set free, or the prayer of the temple be delivered. Thus says the Lord. Even the touch of the mighty shall be set free, and the prayer of the of the of the wicked shall be delivered. The Lord will deliver me today. The Lord will deliver me today. In the name of Jesus, from every love of captivity. In the name of Jesus, deliver me by your name, Lord. The Bible declares that no Lord I am free today. That the fall from the snare of the fowler, the snare is broken, and I am free. For my hand is the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. I break every cause of incantation. In Jesus, mighty name, we pray. Father, we thank you because you are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. 
Let your name be glorified. Amen. We thank you for the direction today. We thank you for giving us the spirit and ability to follow your direction, Father. Hallelujah to your name. Amen. You want us to be completely in you. And therefore, you want us to be free, liberated, so that we can have liberty to dwell in you. And we pray today, Lord, every causes, incantation, evil pronouncement, and any spell that have been raging against our life and foundation, raging against our finances and settlement, waging war against our life seriously, rigorously, as a result of covenant violated, or agreement, agreement that is unkept, vow and hold that we have violated with people, with you, with anybody, or parents, or friends, even in business, that is destroying, fighting against our calling, ministry, finances, and every rest of our life. Today, by the power in the blood of Jesus, the Bible says, our soul is free, like a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snow is broken, and we are free, for our help is in the name of the Lord. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, let every cause and incantation and spell be broken today upon everyone under my voice, and including myself, in the name of Jesus Nazareth. Amen. Shall the captives of the mighty be delivered, or the prey of the terrible be set free? Thus says the Lord, even the captive of the mighty shall be set free, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. The Lord shall combat those who want to combat you. The Lord will make them eat their flesh, and they will drink their own blood like sweet wine. In the name of Jesus, I command every captivity as a result of any violated promises and any broken vows, any broken covenant, every trouble because of that, I command it to be broken from your life today. And I decree that you are set free with the blood of Jesus Christ. With the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says he has gone to the cross. And the Bible says cross is he that gone to the cross. Because he has taken your causes on the cross, I command the spell and causes to be destroyed by the blood of Jesus. In the name Jesus of Nazareth. The Bible says, Proverbs 2, uh, 26 verse 2, that by, by fleeting sparrow and by flying swallow, cause without a cause shall not alert. And it declares all of other in the book of Psalm, Psalm 84 in verse 3. He says, even the, the sparrow has found a place for itself, and the swallow a place where he must lay his head. And therefore, it is the house of the Lord God, our Savior, by the power of the Lord God Almighty, that has come to be our strong tower. Because the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous runs into it and they are saved. We have found a refuge under you. We are abandoning the sacred place of Most High under the shadow of the Almighty God. And we receive protection today. And we command every counsel and incantation to never to disturb us again. Never to work against us again. Never to disturb our fleet. Any application, everything we demand, everything we apply for, everything we are pursuing, everything we are doing, they must no longer wait on, on the door. They must no longer obstruct. They must no longer yell at it. They must no longer pull it down. Every evil voice of incantation of vengeance, every evil voice of incantation of vengeance, every evil voice of repercussion of vengeance that is shouting down your blessing, Yelling down your release of blessing, yelling down your testimony, shouting down at your promises. I command them to be silenced today and never shout at you again. In the name of Jesus, every evil voice of vengeance and repercussion, of causes and incantation that emanated from broken vows and promises and covenant that are yelling anytime they want to be something issued to promote you. Something issue to bless you. Something issue to, to establish you. Something issue to bring you testimony. Powers of those boys that are shouting them down and making them reverse your blessing. As from today, the Lord has spoken. The Bible declares in Ecclesiastes 8.4 that where the voice of the king is, there is authority. Who can stand in? And the Bible says further in the book of Lamentation 3.37 that it is the Lord that the, who is he that the creating that come to pass when the Lord has not commanded it. I command the voice of God to speak. The voice of God to speak to them louder than the blood of Abel to shout down every negative
negative voice. Every negative voice from the from the grave, from hell, shouting that your blessing to be silent forever from today. In the name of Jesus. Be free. Be liberated. Be free. Be liberated. Possess your possession. Be established. Be increased. Be promoted. In the name of Jesus. You are forgiven. The mouth of the Lord has spoken so. In the name of Jesus, Nazareth. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Every blessing that is hidden as a result of causes of covenant breaking, I command the blessing to begin to spring forward. I command it to begin to pop up in the name of Jesus. Blessing, increase, fruitfulness, multiplication, establishment, joy, peace, long life, good health, show in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you are the Lord. Hallelujah to your name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.